don't normally do a lot of granular fertilizer early on in the spring, but last fall I did some seeding here and some work on my front yard and my side yard area, so I could actually probably give this a little bit earlier feeding this year since it's still kind of in the developmental stages there. Basically what it comes down to when you get a new fertilizer spreader or any fertilizer spreader in general is that you kind of need to train yourself and how it works, what your walking speed is, and how much product you're going to put out at specific settings. So I'd always recommend using something like an organic fertilizer to kind of test us on this. That way, if we happen to go a little bit over our setting or a little bit under, you're not gonna damage anything and you don't need to be s extremely precise with those organic fertilizers. We wanna be as accurate as we possibly can, but if we're just slightly over or slightly under, these products are a little bit more forgiving. So I'm thinking maybe let's use something like that to kind of test our settings here. So how are we going to figure out how to calibrate this or any other spreader that we're using? So I'm going to take a 1,000 square foot section. So I measured off the area here by my driveway that happens to be 30 feet long. And then from there, I know that 30 times 33 is 990. So that gets us close to 1,000 square feet. So then I just used my tape measure and marked off 33 feet on one side, put a stake there, marked off 33 feet on the other side on a straight section and put a stake there as well. So now we have a 1,000 square foot section that we know we can start testing on. For our test fertilizer, we're gonna be using some melorganite here. Pretty typical stuff that a lot of you are using, so I wanna use something like that. So the six here is our nitrogen in this bag. So let's take 100 divided by six. That's gonna give us 16.6. .6. So let's round that off to just 16 to make the math easy. We would need 16 pounds of this product per thousand square feet if we were going to put down one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. So again, take 100 divided by six, round that off to 16, and that would be our one pound on the ground of nitrogen per thousand square feet. But I don't wanna go that heavy right now, so I'm just gonna cut that in half. So we're gonna go with eight pounds per thousand square feet. So what I need to do is measure out eight pounds of this actual product, put it into the spreader, and then we will set it according to the guidelines on this manual here, which actually gives me a setting for eight pounds. And then we will walk, and again, we need to train ourselves to figure out what our walking speed is. The calculations in the manual are going to be based on three miles per hour walking speed. So we need to just figure out if we're walking too fast, if we're walking too slow, and how to kind of dial that in a little bit. So that's not going to add too much to our calculation here, but we will make sure that eventually 8 pounds and 4 ounces ends up into that spreader. So right there we're at 3 pounds. I'll pour that in. Make sure our hopper's closed, which it is. Now according to our settings in the manual here, you'll see Molorganite, this is a 620, but we're on a 640, it doesn't really matter too much. The phosphorus content would just be slightly less in this setting and we'll get just slightly more. But here for the one pound, they have 16, they have a setting of 20 on the spreader. For eight pounds per thousand, they have a setting of 17. So we're gonna start at that setting and see what happens. So again, make sure we're closed on the hopper. And the way that this thing works right here is that you just loosen this and move it to where your setting is, but you go by the actual front edge here of the setting. So you can see here it's set on 30 with that front edge. So if we wanted to be at a setting of 17, so we got 15 setting of 17, put it right on the edge there. and tighten it down just like that. So again, this leading edge of the actual adjustment there is how it works. First thing I'm gonna do here is put my side deflector kit down.
Alright, so those trim passes are done. What I want to do out here now is basically just go back and forth and I want to throw the fertilizer to my previous wheel marks if I can. It's kind of hard to see with Melorganite because it's just so dark. But we're going to just kind of gauge it off of where I see it spraying out now. I'm going to set the deflector up now so we can just cover this area with uh, normal spreading. Alright, so here's a couple notes from just what I just did there and what I kind of found. It's very hard to see that Melorganite product coming out at such a low rate. Here, just setting on that, I was kind of guessing exactly where I was going just because I just couldn't see it very well. The way that Melorganite has such a small prill to it, so it's very small in size, when you get to the bottom of a spreader, um, you run into where it just doesn't really want to flow out anymore. There's not enough big size there to kind of push things out. So we'll measure this here and see what I ended up with. But I was getting to the end there and there just wasn't enough product to push it down through the hopper. So it kind of ends up with a little bit in the bottom and you kind of have to shake it around a little bit. That happens as well on my Scott spreader, but I usually just have to kind of pick it up and kind of shake it around until it all comes out. So let's measure this now and see what we ended up with as far as how much product I have left. Not a lot left, but let's see what we ended up with. So we're at 11 ounces. So with the container, remember the container was four ounces. So essentially we ended up with about seven ounces left. Of course, eight ounces would be half of a pound. So we put down about seven and a half pounds in that area there. Not too bad, not too far off. Again, like I said, uh, it's a little bit difficult with Melorganite trying to get the product to go out at such a small prill size. So with what I had left there, pretty close to a good application, what I could either do is slow my pace just a little bit, but I've kind of already trained myself to walk a certain pace. It's just after fertilizing for many years on my own here, just I kind of have a pace that I go at. So if I wanted to try to get just a touch more out of there, I could also set the hopper to open just a little bit farther. So instead of that setting that I used, I could go maybe one notch higher. That's what I would do though, as you continue to use fertilizers over time here, and especially again with organics where we can be a little bit more flexible with the rate then you'll train yourself to kind of walk a certain speed and then you'll also train yourself to kind of use the spreader at a certain way. So over here on this side yard if we count all of this area that little area next to the street it comes out to be a thousand seventy five square feet so it's close enough to a thousand we can also use this as, as a test spot for me. And I actually want to use the Scott spreader for this section. It's what I've been comfortable with. It's what I kind of know for a long time now. So I just want to do that same kind of test here on this side over here. So same exact setup. I'm, I'm putting some product in here. My normal setting for Melorganite is somewhere around 11. So I think I'm gonna try it around eight and a half. I don't really know a setting for half a pound because I haven't done the half a pound application in, in a while. So we'll just take a guess here and we'll see what we end up with at the end. We got my edge guard on, same thing. We do all of our trim passes here first and then we will go to the middle section. Edge guard's off now, and so we're just gonna go ahead. It should only take like two passes through here. And we pretty much got to the end here. And I'm about out, as you can see. You're always gonna run into a little bit of once you get to the bottom 
there's not enough flow there to really get you a consistent flow out onto the yard. Here's what we ended up with. It's left here. You can see not much at all. But I was actually kind of running out, as I said, for an actual consistent flow there towards the end. Same thing that happens on the, the other spreader too, where you get to the bottom and there's just not enough push there. So, let's see what we ended up with here. Yeah, essentially nothing left there, because this container was four ounces, so three quarters. So that was pretty consistent, but what I would prefer to do is put more in the hopper to make sure we get a consistent flow for the entire area. And so then I think that that setting is pretty close for me. I think I would back it down just a touch and that would be pretty good there. So what is this really telling us here? It's just trying to train us so that we know that when we're looking at the back of a bag for a setting, we know that whether or not that's gonna be pretty accurate for our spreader and for our walking speed and how we've kind of trained ourselves to do the fertilizing or whatever application that you have in the spreader. So if you really wanted to, every single time, you could actually measure this stuff out and try to dial it into every single area if you wanted to. Uh, with applications that need to be much more targeted, let's say you were using a pre-emergent or something and this is the first time you've ever done it, if you wanna put it down at three pounds per thousand and you've got a thousand square foot section go ahead and measure out three pounds put it in there then see if you can dial that in very closely to get to that actual three pounds per thousand so this whole thing there is just kind of trying to see whether or not the settings on the bag can actually be used on your spreader and whether you can accurately put down the amount that you want to put down on a thousand square feet